ready to start a profitable ambulance business? Well, in this video, we're gonna be breaking down the steps on how to get started from A to Z. I'm Tiffany. And I'm Anthony. And we run a seven-figure ambulance business. So we're just gonna jump right into the steps you need to do to start your very own ambulance business. So the first thing is research. You're really gonna to want to do some research to figure out what your state requires to start an ambulance business. This includes operational requirement, truck requirement, and any additional prerequisites that might be needed. Now, keep in mind, each state is different and there are some specific states that don't really have a clear path. For example, here in Georgia is very cut and dry. We know that we have to have a medical director. We know that we have to have a pharmacy. We need to get a clear waiver and we just can follow um, said steps. Of course, there are other things involved, but you know, it's very cut and dry. We don't have to get anything approved at a county level. Once we check off, you know, set boxes, then we get application in and we get our truck inspected and then voila, we're an ambulance service. Whereas a state like Florida, you have to first become, uh, you have to get a something called a COPCN, which is like a certificate of need at the county level. So the county will basically determine whether or not they feel that they need such services in their county. And so if the county that you live in or want to start in, you know, doesn't feel like they need the services, then you need to go to another county and so on and so forth. And then once you figure out, you know, that the services are needed, you have to fill out an application and go through a whole set of requirements to get approval in the county. Once you get approval in the county, then you can get approval at the state level. So there are a lot of steps within steps in Florida. And it's a lot of like, just not a clear path and it might be very ambiguous. So, you know, you just really need to know your state before you start out on your journey to start an ambulance service. So the next thing is funding. You need to make sure that you can fund the startup costs of your ambulance business. These include things like, you know, purchasing your truck, purchasing the truck supplies, your insurance down payment, down payment for your office space, and so on and so forth. So the amount of money you need uh, to get started varies from state to state, but we would say a healthy range to keep in mind is between about 50 and $75,000 to get started. Now remember, you can get access to funding or you can leverage your cash, but you have to figure out what's most effective for you. Now, before we go any further, guys, if you're watching this video and you're getting value, please make sure to like and subscribe and even leave a comment. We started this channel so we can give as much insightful information to create successful ambulance business owners. So your engagement really, really matters so we can reach more people. So we're gonna go into the third thing, which is actually setting up the business. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you wanna think about is your basic legals, such as your business name, your entity creation, logos, etc. We always advise uh, consulting with an attorney, especially if you're gonna bring a partner in, you wanna make sure you have um, everything covered, you won't be in a situation where you regret it later. Now the next big decision in setting up is do you wanna be an EMT or not? Now remember guys, if you are an EMT, you're able to uh, save on startup costs because you're able to actually work on the truck, which is a huge saving. And even as you're growing your company, if anyone calls out, you always have the ability to kind of hop on and still fulfill your routes and fulfill your promise to your patients, which is super important. So once you figure out if you wanna be EMT or not, now it's time to go out and start looking for a medical director. So a medical director is a physician who is licensed in your state and he essentially gives you the protocols that you need uh, from your state to be able to operate your business. So these include things like um, what type of drugs you need to have in your truck and also protocols in terms of if something happens to a patient on the back of the truck, your EMT should do X, Y, or Z. Mm -hmm. So the last thing you need is in terms of the setup process is um, finding a location. It's important to know, number one, you can't operate out of your home. So you have to find a location that is zoned properly, that meets your state and local requirements. Um, it's also important to know that when finding a location, you wanna kinda make sure it's close to the dialysis center so you can actually service the, the treatment centers that you wanna service. But you also wanna make sure it's uh, close to um, personnel and potential employees as well. If you're in Timbuktu, you maybe want to get an office a little closer to a metro city so you can access that that person that you need to go service your patients in Timbuktu. So the next steps are purchasing and stocking your truck. The first thing I'll say is you don't need to go out and buy an ambulance just because you see one that's cheap on Facebook Marketplace. Please don't do that. The reason being is because it might be just the wrong ambulance. It might have just a whole lot of mechanical issues and by the time you get it up and running you would have spent the same amount of money you could have spent on a newer less miles a more reliable ambulance so don't i advise you please don't go out and just buy ambulance without doing further research. So now regarding stocking your truck, you'll need to go to your state's website, uh, Department of EMS and Trauma, and there should be somewhere on the website or maybe you can call the state to get some type of checklist of what exactly the state requires for you to have on your ambulance at all times to be compliant. And you'll also need to get whatever your medical director says you need to have in terms of drugs on the truck as well. So you'll kind of be guided with what the state says you need to have and what your medical 
director says you need to have in order to be compliant at all times. So after considering your truck, we need to talk about insurance. When getting insurance, you have to remember you can't reach out to State Farm. You have to reach out to a, a vendor, a representative who is going to essentially bundle EMS insurance for you. And that's going to cover your auto insurance, your professional liability insurance, and any other insurance that your state may require. It's also important to remember that your insurance is a recurring cost. So um, when you purchase your insurance, not only you have to pay a down payment on that insurance, but you also have to pay a recurring cost for that insurance as well. Okay, so we're almost close to the end. So now we're gonna talk about applying for your state license and then Medicare and whatever else you need to apply for to get going. So of course, you need to apply at your state level because this is who will certify you and license you to be a licensed ambulance service in your state. And you cannot operate without this license as well as you cannot apply for Medicare um, without this license. So you would need to do this in this order in order to basically be able to get paid in the future. Yep. And again, as mentioned before, Medicare, the application for Medicare is pretty extensive. We always recommend that you go to a billing company that deals with ambulance billing and they already know through and through what the process is to apply for Medicare. Mm -hmm. That way you don't make any mistakes on your application and delay the process. They walk you through it, you know, step by step, hand in hand, should be at no additional cost and they'll get you going right away. And then you're off to the races and being able to run your first patient. And the last step is going to be getting started and going after your first patient. So just like Tiffany mentioned, after you get approved for your Medicare, um, you are able to start running and billing your claims out, start getting paid. But it's important to make sure that you're uh, you know, staying true to your business model. So whatever you identified early on is in terms of like how you want to start uh, you know, transporting patients and what you want that to look like, make sure you stay true to that. But it's important to know that you know, in terms of marketing, you wanna make sure that you're just being consistent and whatever that is, if you wanna be uh, persistent on you know, contacting social workers at hospital, make sure you're, you're staying true to that and doing that consistently. Mm -hmm. If you want to talk at dialysis centers, which we always recommend to start off, um, make sure that you're always showing up, you're always contacting, you're always connecting. Do that consistently and persistently, and uh, you will be off to a great start in terms of running and scaling and growing your business. So yeah, guys, I know we went through a lot, but these are the steps to get started and start growing your ambulance service. And one thing to note is that it is a process, but on the other side is a rewarding uh, business that is not only gonna benefit you, but more importantly, it's gonna impact the community. I'm Tiffany. And I'm Anthony. And we are Ambulance Academy. Now, if you wanna learn how to start and grow a profitable ambulance business, then feel free to click the link below and learn more about our Ambulance Academy Accelerator. Inside this accelerator, we give you the step-by-step -step process, tools, and resources to start and grow a successful ambulance business. In addition, if you're already an ambulance business owner, we'd like to introduce you to Simpler. Simpler is an ambulance business management software that allows you to take the headache out of managing patients, personnel, and trips, and puts ease of mind right at your fingertips with our web and mobile solutions.